right. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone upstairs as well. Hi, everyone. So, so everyone has a seat, right? If not, we can. I don't know what we can. If not, but I can see spaces. Am I shouting too much upstairs? Can you hear me up there, guys? Great. We will start once everyone settled down. We are waiting for you. A bit hurry, right? Dynamics? Uh, no? no oh, sorry. Welcome everyone to Dynamics Unit and please let me know if I hurt your ears. My name is Akın, uh, Akın Atash. I am a lecturer in MACE. I am teaching Dynamics and design, design for mechanical students only. So aerospace students will only have dynamics with me. And next year we will continue with Mac uh, students. So it is great to see many of you and still coming. So this is really great. Um, thank you for joining. I, I know that this is not because this is the first lecture. So you are all committed to dynamics unit as well as other units and I really hope to see as many of you in the coming lectures. Right. Is it so boring already? Downing. No? I mean I was telling your friends guys so I really know that it may not be the best time to take Dynamics unit after two hours of, what was it, finite elements yeah. course. Well, it's a bit, well, it's a bit short, the first right. So it may not be ideal, but I hope that you will, you are going to enjoy the dynamics unit because this is really like, you know, fun. You will see what I mean. It will be really fun sometimes. It may not be sometimes. It will be ups and downs, I know. Uh, but I really hope that, um, I know that you will do your best to engage with dynamics, right? Good. So, what else? So, I am sure you already heard many things about intended learning outcomes. So, first, we start with our intended learning outcomes, or ILOs so that you will know what to expect from dynamics unit or any other unit actually. So it will give you an idea what you will be achieving by the end of this unit. Our intended learning outcomes. So we are intending to develop your understanding and skills on analysis of mechanical systems, but on which mechanical systems? Or in which aspects? I think you already have some idea about what dynamics module or unit can be about, but we are going to introduce some approaches for the analysis and design of mechanical systems when they are subjected to dynamic loading. So especially we will be interested about vibrations. So this unit basically like, you know, it is comprised of three main subjects. The third one is about vibration. Vibrations will take us about four weeks from now to complete. After the four weeks of vibration part, we will go for 3D kinematics. So it will take us, kinematics will take three weeks. And after kinematics, we are going to engage with kinetics for the, for the rest of the semester. So basically three main parts. So the first part, we are going to talk about dynamic responses or responses of mechanical systems to 
vibrations, how they behave. And then we are going to extend our knowledge and skills to 3D kinematics, as I said. But I know you already got the point. We are talking about extending our understanding and skills from something, which means we already need to have some kind of understanding and skills on kinematics so that we can extend it to 3D bodies. So now, you see, I, I pick sometimes some victims. Sorry. This. So we are talking about kinematics, right? So we assume that in dynamics you have some background on kinematics. So what is kinematics? Uh. <laughs> yeah, so like forces, velocity. Excellence. Yes, yes, thank you. So kinematics is mainly dealing with, as your name? Sam. Sam told us, is about investigating geometric or geometry of the motion. So if, if a plane going from A to B flying in kinematics, we are just interested to find about the velocity or we are just interested about geometry of the, of the flight, how the plane moves from A to B or how a satellite moves from one point to another one. So we are not really interested about the forces causing the motion. We are not interested about the force that makes the plane fly. But in kinetics, what we are interested with? Um. Yes, we are interested about forces in, in the kinetics part. So it will be kind of a logical structure. First, just we will be talking about vibrations, then kinematics where we care about only the geometry of the motion and we will try to find velocities, accelerations, this kind of things of different points on mechanisms. And then the rest of the semester we will be dealing with the forces, the kinetics of the, of the motion. Right. When the time will come, we will, I will try to show you some relevant examples because if you don't see the relevance of what you are learning, where you can use it later on, next year when you start working, if you don't see that a relation like, you know, about the dynamics and what you will be doing next year, there is no point you sitting here and trying to listen to me after five hours of other lectures, right? This is very important and my advice as I said, I will try to show you how everything that you'll be studying has direct relevance to your job that you'll be using possibly, not all of you probably, but if you feel at some point during the lectures and you cannot see it, you cannot see that you know, it really may work for you later on in your working life, please let me know and I will try to prove opposite. As I said, I mean, some of you may be just dealing with some static calculations during your career. I cannot guarantee that. But still, if you don't know where you will be working, I am almost sure that, you know, you always will need to use some form of dynamics. Even you are just, you know, analyzing structure, you are an FEA engineer, you definitely will need to use dynamics. Kinematics and kinetics, maybe vibrations as well, really. So, as I said, if you feel at some point that actually, okay, it is going nowhere and I don't see any relevance, let me know. It means that I will need to provide some extra examples. So, course timetable. Uh, I'm glad to see that, you know, as many of you here, it means that you already have this timetable on your schedules or on your timetable, you can see dynamics, which was not the case last semester with our design unit. 
so there were some problems with the new structure, but it is great to see that you are aware of this. Yet, I just want to highlight that, you know, we have lectures on Mondays here, 3 to 4 p.m., and Thursdays, yet later than today as well, 4 to 5. Who would like to set the dynamics from 4 to 5 on Thursdays? You see the spirit, guys? So, you know, thank you very much. Anytime, not anywhere in the class, right? Anytime, anywhere could be also, but yeah, thank you for that. So we have also a Thursday, four to five. We also have tutorials. Tutorials will be on even weeks. It is on Fridays, three to four p.m. Again, it will be here. So for the tutorials, there are six GTAs, graduate teaching assistants will be joining us. So I hope you will challenge them because when you challenge them, they are also like, you know, improving their teaching skills as well, right? So please try to make sure that you are making most of your time in the tutorials as well and ask as many questions as you want to our GTAs to clarify. So if still like, you know, something is not clarified, we have discussion boards on Blackboard. How many of you guys checked the Dynamics Blackboard page so far? Great. But I can see the room for improvement. So please have a look and try to understand what are available to you on Blackboard because, yeah, as I said, discussion board is there which is very useful in general. And also, I am uploading every week new materials. For example, the slides that I will be using today, they are already available on Blackboard. So please try to study before you come. And you, it means if you can have a look before you come, it means that you can maximize your outcome from our lectures. Because if you see first time here, then until you develop your question, it takes time and I will move forward. But if you come prepared, you will be able to ask your questions on time. So please have a look before you come and I will try to remind every week to you uh, whenever I upload something new, I will try to email you guys. And one more thing. Quizzes are very important. And every week, I will provide you a quiz. It will be available online on Blackboard every week. Uh, so you can test your knowledge and understanding. They, they, are, they, are, they are quite like, you know, simple questions just to make sure that it is not, they are not intended to force you, okay, to develop new skills or something. They are intended to repeat some basic information to make sure that you are consolidating your knowledge about this. But obviously there are some other opportunities that they will be more challenging. So, okay, before I forget, so there will be no marks associated with these <laughs> weekly quizzes, bless you. As I said, they are just you know, intended to make sure that you are repeating and consolidating your understanding. Content. What we are going to do all this semester for 12 weeks, right? So it seems a quite a long time frame, but it really, I mean, time really flies. You will not really understand how it passed. So, as I said, we are going to start with vibrations. Did you, did you have any vibrations related courses before at university? Yeah. No? But in high school? No. What? No? no? <laughs> nothing? No one knows nothing about vibrations so far. You know, guys, you just forget. Right? So. <laughs> I mean, there is, there is no problem because we are going to start with, from fundamentals anyway. But when we will study, when we will start studying, you will really remember things 
from previous years. Similar. So we call mechanical oscillations as vibrations, so they are quite similar. You see? Right. Great. So we will first start with vibrations. There are different types of vibrations, damped, undamped, and different other, like, you know, viscous damping, we call them. And then we will finish this vibrations with two degree of freedom systems. This will prepare you for other more advanced vibrations unit. Because I'm not sure when you will take it, but probably it should be next semester. There is a unit called vibrations and acoustics, I think. Recently the name has been changed, so I'm not really sure about the current name, but it is more advanced vibrations. So this unit will provide you the basic background for studying vibrations, for advanced vibrations. So it is really important, guys. It is not just for this unit, but again, it will provide you a background for other advanced units. Then we will move to kinematics of a rigid body. And I, I am sure that you are familiar with most of these topics, rotation about a fixed point, time derivative of a vector. This may be new, don't worry. General motion, relative motion. Again, I am sure you already studied these topics in mechanics unit, but in mechanics unit you already also, on, sorry, you only consider particle dynamics and 2D dynamics, plane cases, right? So now we are going to advance it to 3D. I'm not going to lie, at some point it will be, it may be challenging, okay? But this is the point. If nothing would challenge you here, it means that you are not learning anything new. Right. So this is the point, uh, but please don't get uh, upset or something. It is challenging, but it is also fun, and I will do my best to make sure that you are mastering everything about the topics that we cover. So no worries, but the good thing about this, as I was telling to your friends, Parts of this unit is quite challenging, but when you will see, and there is no reason that you will not succeed, when you will be able to solve these complex 3D problems, you will feel more like an engineer. And it will improve your self-confidence significantly, and it is a really good feeling, really, when you can really achieve something challenging, you will feel this self-satisfaction. This will really, again, improve your level of self-confidence. I can see that so far, I mean, most of you, all of you are quite confident anyway, but still this will be a booster kind of. And as I said, you will really use them in working life. When we will go for kinetics, moments and products of inertia. Again, this is something that you know from mechanics. And angular momentum, kinetic energy, equations of motion, again, all are quite familiar to you. The only thing may be uh, not very relevant to your previous works, gyroscopic motion, which is, again, a very, uh, I don't know, it is really fun when you learn about gyroscopic motion, and when you see where we can use the gyroscopic effect and its calculations. So these are quite important things. When I say you already know angular momentum, you already know kinetic energy, whatever, again, if I will feel that there is something missing, I will make sure that you will learn it first before we go further. This is why from some time, I mean from time to time, I provide my students with some extra information uh, to make sure that they have the required background. So communication is very important. So I will sometimes ask you if you are comfortable with a specific subject, for example, before going forward. If you are not, 
please let me know and I will make sure that you will, you will be provided with the relevant material before we go forward because again, if you cannot understand what we are doing and if you are suffering from some uh, lack of some relevant knowledge and information, there is no point to push it forward, right? So I will make sure that you know everything before we go forward. There will be two coursework with this unit. So the first one, you will see it is about out, it will be out on week five. It will be just after we finished our vibration topics. And then you will need to submit this on week seven. So there will be two weeks for you to complete this assessment. The first assessment covers only vibration topics, so you don't need to worry about other ones. And then the second coursework, again, it is online on Blackboard. Um, it will be out on week nine, and you will submit on week 11. The second assessment will cover the topics <coughs> of 3D kinematics and 3D kinetics only, because you will be already assessed for uh, vibrations. Both courseworks carries 10% to your total mark, and then when we will come to the exam period, it will be an exam, it will be 80% of your total mark, right? And that's it. You will be done with the dynamics unit. And then, summertime, right? Have some fun, enjoy, good. So, there are some exam papers, past exam papers are available uh, on Blackboard, maybe you can find it somewhere else as well. But just please note that the syllabus has changed uh, over the years, so not all of the questions that you can find uh, of previous papers may not be relevant to this year. So from 2000 and 2018 and 19 onwards, the papers will be more relevant, but previous papers like 2014-15 may not be that relevant, although there will be some relevant questions within the exam. Our core textbook. Guys, um, this is our core textbook, and this is one of the best textbooks in the world. It is used in really uh, great universities like Manchester and others. I really like this textbook for different reasons. One of them is the, the book is very organized. Other thing, you are using the same book in mechanics as well. So this will be quite, I think, you will be familiar with the book anyway. It provides a lot of examples that you can solve. And the book is formatted very well and organized very well in general. So this is our core textbook and it is available online. Since it is available, please try to engage with the book as much as you can. Um, last year, two years ago, um, I was talking with library because I asked them a couple of years ago to buy this online book and the university is paying for every student to the uh, Pearson, to Pearson, who is providing the book. And they called me for feedback from library and again I was telling my students, this is a great book, it is available online, you can use it anywhere, everywhere you want. And I was saying that this is a really great book, my students really enjoy it, because whenever I ask my students, they say, yeah, this is a great one, and everything. And library told me, sorry, but only 20% of your students are using the textbook. They are spying, right? So they know everything now, right? And they sent me the report of the book and really it was about 20% of my students were using it only. And then, again, they asked me, if you are not using the book, please tell us, then no, we will not need to pay for the book. And again, I assured them, no, this is a great book. 
We really like it. Students really enjoy the book. Now we need to prove that, guys, okay? So since it is there, I know that, you know, maybe some of you guys, you don't really enjoy studying from uh, an online book and you want a physical copy. There are physical copies available as well, but still I think uh, it will be good if you just take advantage of the book and try to, it will help you to maximize your learning. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, there are two main books that deserve to be uh, offered to our students. And this is not just my opinion, but overall, like, you know, mechanics experts in the world, they are just advising two main textbooks. One is, again, our textbook, which we use. The other one, it is comparable. It is Miriam and Craig's book, which is also available in our library. They have many different uh, copies. So whichever you prefer, you can use. But if you use this one, it may be a bit easier to follow what I am teaching in general. But sometimes, when I was first trying this book, I, feel, I felt that, you know, at some point, especially in vibrations as well, when I was studying myself, that book didn't make everything so clear. So I felt that, you know, this could be kind of explained a bit better way. And I was turning to Miriam's book, Miriam and Craig's book, and I don't know, they are kind of complementary. If one is kind of weak in explaining one specific subject, the other one kind of, you know, complementing this one. So it really works for me, guys. Still, like, sometimes I really check uh, both books and try to complement and try to understand better. So if it, it will be case for you, you are also, again, uh, free to use any other textbook to make sure that you understand everything. So the main point is to understand the concepts and be able to apply them to our problems anyway. But we are going to check this, right? So online. So in Blackboard, not now, but in Blackboard, there is a section on the left-hand side. It is directing us to, what was it? E-learning? No. I look at this a thousand times, you see, I cannot remember. What, what it could be? There is a link on the left-hand side when you go to main page for Dynamics Unit, sorry? Resources. Online or e-learning resources, thank you very much. So please try to have a look at the book. So things you did last year in mechanics are very useful to us in this lecture. So as we mentioned before, you did particles and 2D dynamics. Both kinetics and kinematics you covered. And there is a question now, guys. Uh, I, every year I feel this. I'm teaching this unit, I think, five years here now. But every time I ask this question, I'm getting a bit anxious. But I need to ask again. Uh, how many of you feel quite confident about the topics you covered in year one? Yes. <laughs> you see, this is like. <laughs> uh, no one. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, it, it is not the best thing uh, <laughs> to expect, but it's fine, right? There is hope all the time. Uh, so I will do my best again to cover as much as I can. I cannot obviously teach you again mechanics. But I will do my best to um, recall, make, make sure that you will recall the main uh, concepts from mechanics. Because again, if you are not really comfortable with that, how we will go for 3D? First, we have to solve for 2D. Then it will be easier to go for 3D, right? 
but really no one. I mean, the question may be like, you know, I couldn't express it clearly. So you covered these topics, kinematics, kinetics of particles, and planar or 2D kinematics and kinetics in year one. So the question was, how many of you feel quite comfortable with, or how many of you remember still those concepts from last year? Thank you very much. You see? Good. You made my day. <laughs> Thank you very much. So as I said, guys, don't no worries. I will make sure that everyone feels comfortable. And by the end of this year, you will feel comfortable both like on particles, 2D and 3D kinetics and kinematics. I promise. Good. Uh, things to remember. Concepts, concept of rigid body. So what is a rigid body, guys? Rigid body is for this structure. Solid structure is, thank you, this is good, but are, are the solids are rigid? No. They displace. So when you apply a force, they may display, although they are uh, solid, right? So rigid body means when you apply any load, you just assume that the points, they, they don't displace. This is the assumption that we make when we are studying dynamics. In reality, you know that you studied structures. From structures, you know that whenever you apply in a load, materials displace, solid bodies displace, but here in dynamics and mechanics, we just assume that they don't. Because this makes life easy to study mechanics and dynamics, because in dynamics, you don't really care about displacement. You just consider the forces causing the motion or the velocities of solid bodies or rigid bodies, right? When it comes to, again, structures, you may deal with the displacements and other stresses, strains, whatever, but in dynamics, we will just assume that they don't change their, their points not changing uh, their locations under applied loads. Relative motion, relative motion is one of the, I don't know really, uh, it is kind of considered one of the main challenging aspects in dynamics in general, but I will show you, it is not the case, you will really, I believe, enjoy relative motion. This is a very good one. Uh, again, I really hope that you will be able to enjoy that. Free body diagrams. In physics, I am sure you heard it many times. If you are not uh, generating the pre body diagram before you attack or before you try to solve the problem, then it is much easier to make mistakes. So we are creating free body diagrams before trying to solve any problems in physics in, I don't know, in different areas as well. Moment of inertia. Again, probably you heard it many times in different lectures uh, in, I don't know, physics probably again somehow uh, mentioned in different cases, but I'm going to mention them again. Newton's law. Yes, this is, this is something that you, know, you cannot miss. Uh, but again, here in dynamics, we are going to apply the laws to 3D bodies. It is a bit more uh, complex, maybe, but again, there is nothing different than 2D cases, so I believe that you know, it will be quite a straightforward process for you. Things to refresh, matrices, vectors, uh, engineering mathematics. I, I hope this is not depressing you guys from the very first lecture, and I hope that you, know, you will not uh, avoid dynamics lectures. 
this is I'm just trying to show you first what kind of things can be involved and what kind of things that you may need to refresh. But the rest of the lectures uh, will be much more enjoyable. Although the first lecture must be quite enjoying because first impression very important, right? But I want to show you first, this is the kind of reality check, what we need. When we know what we are missing and what can be like, you know, uh, kind of refreshed, then at the beginning of the semester you will know what you know, what you don't know, so you will know where you are, so this will make it much easier for everyone, right? Like real life, sometimes you need to do reality checks before you start things, right? Uh, these are notations for vectors and scalars, so you, I'm sure you already know these kind of things, but just in the exam, one thing that you need to be careful, you can use a line under or above the vectors to indicate that they are vector, actually. Uh, so I'm sure you already know these kind of things, right? right. Basic, simple. Uh, when I say that, you know, I know that you already know those things, please don't get... Uh, upset or like, you know, I will not assume later on that you know things, so I will try to start from zero. So this one was our first slide, and I want to cover a couple of things before we finish today uh, with the vibrations. So this is our first topic, vibrations. Okay, we started this one, our intended learning outcomes again. So we will try to apply equation of motion to a very simple case, undamped vibrations first, because we try to solve from the easy things first, which will give us more confidence, and then we can try to solve more complex structures later on. We are going to analyze single degree of freedom systems under pre and post vibrations in week two. Then we will extend the methodology for two degree of freedom of systems. When we will come to this one, I think it will be in week four, when we will we'll be talking about two degree of freedom systems, you will feel that, oh my God, what are we doing? Like, you know, it is, it is too much, okay? Uh, I know that at least like some of you will feel this way. This year, last semester, I was teaching design three. One of my students came to me and told me, 2D systems were quite simple, to be honest, because he was taking the vibrations unit with infinite number of uh, degree of freedoms, and he said it was quite helpful for him, for them, to understand other topics. So. It, at first, it may seem a bit more complex and complicated, but once you will be engaging with them, you will feel that actually you know and you can actually uh, extend your knowledge to indefinite number of degree of freedom systems. So, the simple case on the free vibration, you can see at the beginning of sections, like you know, which parts are relevant, in addition to this Dynamics, Hibler's Dynamics, and Miriam and Craig's book, there is another great book of Rao. This is available in our library as well. This is, again, one of the probably like, you know, best books. This is really a great one, uh, Rao's book on vibrations. If, again, you will feel that you need, you need some extra, you need to learn, you want to learn more about vibrations, please try to check this book. Uh, thing ratio row. Please check that one as well. So, in our lectures, I know that this has been already like, you know, I was talking quite a lot since the start of our lecture, but in most of my lectures, I want you to discuss, guys, because I will show you later on one, a pyramid of learning. If I'm just talking here, how, how many percent you will remember next week? 5%. So I'm talking one hour and you will just remember 5%. Is it ideal? No. If 
you will be discussing with your friends next to you how many percent? Sorry, I'm asking the same. How many percent? 60, 70 percent. If you are teaching someone, 90, 95 percent. So this is really important to engage. Retention rate is increasing when you engage to discuss, also teach someone else. This is really important. So I want you to discuss with your friends in general. But the important thing is, guys, the discussion period will be very short time, two minutes, three minutes. The important thing is, when I am telling, okay, guys, we stop, we continue, you need to stop on time, otherwise uh, it is getting uncontrollable Then we have about, I don't know, 200, 300 students now here, right? So, your two minutes now starts, and it will be a good opportunity for you to discuss and meet. You, you can start, you, you can feel quite uncomfortable to discuss. I am still taking some trainings. I am going to conferences, for example, or taking, again, lectures. They told, that tell us, okay, make group now and discuss. I hate it. Really, seriously. <laughs> but I still remember almost everything what we discussed. It is quite uncomfortable, but this is the way to learn. You can start conversation. What is your name? How are you doing? This kind of things, okay? So please discuss what is vibration and what kind of vibration examples you see around. So, two minutes, guys, please. I am always looking for victims. When I see some, <laughs> when I see someone not doing, I'm just you know. It's a, so what do you think my vision is? Um, Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of where where do you feel vibrations? What do you think about vibrations? Or how you would define vibration? Is it, is it vibration? Is it good thing or bad thing? Ask him. Is it good or bad thing? Is vibration good or bad thing? Is vibration good or bad thing? Depends. But imagine you are driving a car and it is vibrating too much. Is it good or bad? Could be good as well. <laughs> no, no. You see, this, this, this strategy, when I'm telling, discuss, just pretend that you are discussing with someone, otherwise I will come up behind you. <laughs> so, you can ask this guy behind me. Perfect, perfect. Hi. What is vibration? Ask, ask him, ask him. Push him like, you know, what is, what is vibration? Is it a good thing or bad thing? How do we know it is a good thing or bad thing? This kind of thing. Just push him. Hi, sorry. Hi, he has a question for you. Sorry about this. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You have been discussing? Yes. Right? So what is vibration? Well, you can have you can have it as an oscillation. Yes. So we call mechanical oscillations as vibrations, so you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have a vibration which is an oscillation. Or you could have Yeah. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? 
Depends. You don't want oscillation in like an F1 car. Right. You've got like a like, like, one oscillation speed. Great, great, great. Continue. Did you ask him what's the vibration? And what was the answer? <laughs> this is not the point. <laughs> All right. So, what is vibration? All right. Okay, now. At this point, it is really great to see that you are discussing. But now it is time to stop. Then we can continue. I mean, I am, I am, uh, I am a researcher and I'm a lecturer as well. So I am quite interested about your retention rate and how you learn as well, guys. So I am giving you some time, and when you discuss, it is really increasing your retention rates of the knowledge. Even you are talking about the, I don't know, football match of last night or something. It still helps you to improve your retention rates. So it doesn't matter what to talk about. I prefer you talk about dynamics. If not, no problem. But still, it really helps you to keep more knowledge. So vibration is oscillation or oscillating motions. To be honest, like we're calling uh, mechanical oscillations as vibrations in general. So bodies, when they are displacing from their position of equilibrium, and oscillating about this point, we call it vibration. There are two, generally, we, we will deal with two different types of vibrations, free and forced vibrations. Free vibration, it is just about like uh, if the mechanical system is only under the uh, influence of the gravitational forces, we call it like free vibration. If something actually forcing or displacing our structures from their equilibrium position, we call them forced vibrations. In both cases, we have damped and undamped uh, types. So undamped, excluding friction. We assume that there is no friction, although in none of the, uh, I mean, not none of them, but 99% of the time, we always have friction in mechanical systems. We cannot actually avoid the friction completely, but for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of uh, simplifying our equations and our reports in this kind of lectures, we are just assuming that there is no friction. In reality, it will not, it will not be the case, but since it is kind of an introduction to vibrations, we can assume that. Damped ones, they are, again, opposite of on that vibration, we are thinking about internal and external frictional forces. So the simplest one is on that free vibration. So it, is, it makes really sense to start learning from this one, and then we will build as a constructive, constructivist learning approach. We will start constructing on the simple one. So let's uh, we have two minutes. Quickly, let's watch these videos and then we will continue later on. As we said, vibration can be good or bad depending on the application and process. Uh, but here you will see two different examples that we need to avoid quite, uh, they could be quite catastrophic. And probably you heard about, especially aero guys, you probably heard about flutter, air elastic flutter. And it can really cause some unwanted consequences. And until next lecture, please think what is happening here. Check about flutter. What is flutter? And imagine you are in that plane. They cut the video at some point. We don't know what happened. This is
is very famous one, Tacoma Narrow Bridge. Uh, real life, real structure, and it is just 50, 60 years ago, and it is unbelievable, for example, like how engineers didn't think about this. Do you think they didn't think about this? They didn't know how to deal with vibrations? The man parked the car, and he, he is safe, he was safe, but unfortunately, there was a dog in the car, uh, and they couldn't save it, the dog. What will happen now? What can happen, you think? What will happen, you think, now? You see, they are coming with popcorn. <laughs> what will happen? What happened? What will happen now? Soon. Let's see. If they would have mobile phones. <laughs> Is that actually real? Real, yeah. This is real. Yes, this is a real case, guys. And catastrophic failure. Thank you very much for joining and think about it until our next lecture. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you.